Hello viewers, welcome to the Dateline Northeast, a program that gives you an overview of the developments in India's Northeast region. I am a host Chandra Kala and the highlights of today's program are India hosts 15 ASEAN India Commemorative Summit to reinforce ACTIS policy. Guwahati International Airport to get its first ever new integrated terminal building soon. Asia's largest all-women market reopens to the public in Imphal. And India's Northeast celebrates Republic Day with pageantry. Commemorating the 25th anniversary of ASEAN-India Dialogue Relations, India held the ASEAN-India Commemorative Summit under the theme of Shared Values and Common Destiny in New Delhi. Leaders from 10 ASEAN countries visited India to participate in the summit and discussed ways to tackle common issues like militancy, security and more importantly, connectivity in Northeast. We bring a report. Marking 25 years of India's ties with Southeast Asian countries, the ASEAN India Commemorative Submit Team, Common Values, Shared Destiny was held recently in the national capital, focusing on key areas of countering terrorism and improving security and connectivity. Leaders and delegates from the 10 ASEAN countries, namely Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos and Prune participated in the summit. During the submit, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held bilateral meetings with several ASEAN leaders, eyeing trade boosts along with infrastructure and connectivity and regional development in the northeastern state and regional security. The two-day submit set light on the projects undertaken by the private sectors to establish better road, rail and air connectivity of Northeast India and make it a business hub and a gateway to Southeast Asia as part of India's Act East policy. Connecting from the Northeast is of particular interest to us, again um, because of the proximity of, uh, of the Northeast to, the, to Southeast Asia. So certainly it's, uh, certainly it's in our plans and certainly we'll be looking to working with the state governments, whether it's Assam or any other government, right, uh, to make sure that we connect and we connect uh, in a significant fashion with, the, with Southeast Asia. India's endeavor to make a strategic shift in its regional policy from its locust policy to the new act is policy remained a major criteria of discussions during the submit. Moreover, a valedictory session of ASEAN India Business and Investment Meet and Expo team, ASEAN India Relations, envisioning the next 25 years, was also conducted where discussion was held on the need to strengthen ASEAN India bilateral trade. For economic prosperity, emphasis was laid for improving and advancement in the agriculture sector in the East India, where agriculture plays a pivotal role. Highlighting the importance of Digital India to transform India into a digitally empowered society and knowledge-based economy, Union Minister of Law and Justice Ravi Shankar Prasad reflected upon various aspects of the success of Digital India in the Northeast region. And the last in this connection is BPO in the small towns of India. And I'm very proud of that initiative of this government. In the last two years we started. Today we have got BPO operating in Kohima, in Imphal, in Dibrugarh, in Guwahati, in Patna, Samastipur, Kanpur, Allahabad, and most of all, Srinagar, Badga, Sopor, which are affected by so-called terrorist people, apart from all over the country. Because we wanted to rescue digital process from Delhi, Mumbai, Gurgaon, Pune, Hyderabad, Mangalore, no grudge against them. But let digital movement become a master. During the submit, leaders' retreat was held where all the leaders of the ASEAN nation held friendly talk with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The theme of the retreat session was maritime cooperation and security. A lot of countries, including like my own, you know, uh, it's easy to be land focused. You know, then we go to forums like APEC or Indian Ocean Rim Association that talks about the sea and blue economy. And that, that uh, 
pushes us to think outside our original box. So I'm happy that at this summit they're going to talk about maritime cooperation and security, which uh, will make us explore another area of, uh, of potential for, for ASEAN and India. Myanmar State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi held a productive discussion with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, intensifying bilateral cooperation, including follow-up on key decisions taken during Prime Minister's visit to Myanmar in September 2017. The Northeast region of India is stepping forward in becoming the gateway to Southeast Asia as Assam's Guwahati city is all set to get its new integrated terminal building at the Guwahati International Airport. Recently, Minister of Civil Aviation Ashok Gajapati Raju led the foundation stone of a new integrated terminal building at Lokpriya Gopinath Bodoloi International Airport in the city. The new terminal will help easing better economic and business ties with the Southeast Asian countries. A special report. Better connectivity in Northeast region has always been a core issue and tops the list of priorities for the present central government. Gearing up to position itself as a gateway to Southeast Asia, Assam is all set to get its new integrated terminal building at Guwahati International Airport in the year 2021. It is indeed a major overhaul for the aviation sector of the country. This terminal will open new avenues for the Northeast and the country as a whole and will boost bilateral ties and strengthen economic and business linkages with the Southeast Asian countries. Civil Aviation Minister Ashok Gajapati Raju, along with the Chief Minister of Assam, Sarbananda Sonwal, laid the foundation stone of the integrated terminal building at Lokpriya Gopinath Bordoloi International Airport in Guwahati. The existing terminal building has capacity 3.5 million passengers per annum. This year, it has handled 3.8 million passengers per annum. So, this building is very congested because the Guwahati North East window is and usko hum ek intra hub aur inter inter hub banana chahte hain guwahati bahut effective ek intra region aur inter region hub banega yahi hamara prayas bhi hai aur cargo handling ke liye bhi humne abhi kuch hi dino pehle shuru kiya hai to usme cargo ka bhi bahut sara potential hai filhal yahan pe international jo flights hain wo 8 movements per week hain yani it ye connect karta hai paro aur bangkok ko through druk air so, पर हमें पूरी उम्मीद है जिस तरह से गुवाहाटी ग्रो कर रहा है जितना यहां पोटेंशियल है टूरिज्म पोटेंशियल है उसको सबको देखते हुए यहां पे एशियन कंट्रीज और साउथ ईस्ट एशिया से काफी फ्लाइट्स शुरू होंगी इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू डेवलप द एयर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन नॉर्थ ईस्ट सो दैट इज व्हाई इन द मिनिस्टर ऑफ सिविल एविएशन एंड एज़ वेल एज़ इन द एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया वी आर वेरी वेरी कॉन्शियस ऑफ द चैलेंज ऑफ डेवलपिंग द एविएशन फैसिलिटीज इन नॉर्थ ईस्ट कीपिंग दैट इन माइंड एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया हैज टारगेटेड to spend around 3400 crores in developing the air aviation infrastructure in northeast between 2014 15 to 2021 out of which 900 crores projects have already been completed lot of other projects are on the way Similarly, 2300 crores more projects will be we are targeting to complete in the next 3 to 4 years time under the Uridesh Kanagrik Uran scheme, various projects have been rolled out by the center in the northeast which has given a major boost to connectivity in the region the new terminal will come up with a cost of Rs 1232 crores and is spread over 90,000 square meters. The passenger will witness a sea change in the airport as the terminal will be equipped with world-class passenger facilities and will have the capacity to handle 3,100 passengers during peak hours. The interiors of the building will depict local handicrafts, morals and popular tourist destinations of Assam. This initiative of introducing the new integrated terminal building would also help in realization of the growth potential of the state of Assam and the region as a whole. AI is responsible for infrastructure, it's the authority under legislation. They have their plans. Besides those plans, even private players are coming in. There are greenfield airports going on in the country. And aviation looks to have a very bright future. Now this will happen if all state governments, government of India and all concerned work together as a team. Southeast Asian countries connectivity, government of Assam has given a very interesting idea, exciting idea it is. So that idea has to be developed on. They have also said that they are willing to go up to 100 crore viability gap funding. Now as far as aviation is concerned, we are happy with it. 
Moreover, as informed by the state government, the city side of the building will be landscaped with lush green areas. It is noteworthy that the new integrated terminal building will have 64 check-ins counter, 20 self counters, 8 immigration counters, 8 custom counters, 6 arrival carousels, 10 escalators, 25 elevators, 16 self baggage drop counters and 20 aircraft parking bays among others. The introduction of the new integrated terminal building will not only improve the communication but will enhance the growth of transportation and connectivity for economic prosperity in the region and the country as a whole. Well, next we have Manipur's Quarim Bun Market, also known as Ema Kethal, one of Asia's largest markets run and managed by only women, has reopened to the public after two years. The women vendors resumed their trade activities inside the two sheds of the reconstructed Ema Kethal, damaged by the 6.7 magnitude earthquake that hit Manipur on January 4, 2016. Quirembang Ima Ketel, more popularly known as Nupi Ketel, Mardis Market, is considered to be the only market and largest in Asia which is being run and managed by women only. Recently, this centuries-old market was restored to its glory after two years when it had to be closed after being damaged by a 6.7 magnitude of earthquake that ravaged Manipur in 2016. Horticulture and Soil Conservation Minister of the State, Taunujam Swam Kumar, presided the reopening functions of Ima Ketil, organized by the Imphal Municipal Corporation in Manipur's capital city. The two market buildings, namely Imoinu Ima Ketil and Poipi Ima Ketil, were renovated with a total fund of Rs 21 crore provided by the state BWT. <laughs> ไอ้เด้อคุยอาสมตะธรรมเดียงไว้บ่อันนี้ปูยอนบะซุยาเดลัมบีซุเวอะมะคะตังไว้บะนี่นะอะคุยจีสิเดเลยละกาอิจายช
The program strives at giving two drops of the oral polio vaccine to all children below five years of age at the nearest polio booth. The drive aims to eradicate polio maladies polio in India by vaccinating all children under the age of five years against polio virus. The round would be conducted across the state with all 11 districts participating in the same. All the parents' guardians were urged to bring their children to the nearest polio booth for health facility. This year, 85 individuals from different parts of the country were conferred the Padma Awards 2018, one of the highest civilian awards of the country. Nine personalities from the Northeast region were also among the Padma Shri awardees of this year. Three noted achievers hail from Assam, namely Prafulla Govinda Borua, Joshri Goswami Mohanta, and Arup Kumar Datta for their contribution to literature and education. And two personalities were from the landlocked state of Nagaland, namely Lentina Aothakkar for social work and Piyong Temjen Jamir for his contribution to literature and education. Langpok Lakpam, Subadeni and weightlifter Sai Khom Mirabai Chanu from Manipur were also awarded the Padma Shri Awards 2018 for their contribution in art and sports discipline respectively. Moreover, Mizoram's Ajakya was awarded for his outstanding contribution to Mara literature and journalism. International tennis player Som Dev Dev Burman from Tripura were also among the nine Padma Shri Awards recipients from the Northeast region. The colourful and diverse culture of the country was knitted beautifully and celebrated across the nation during the 69th Republic Day celebrations. Similarly, the Northeastern region also marked the historic day with gaiety and pomp. India's capital New Delhi city came to life as a beautifully curated tableau from across the country passed through the ceremonial boulevard amid thousands of spectators during the 69th Republic Day celebration. This year, 10 ASEAN leaders attended the historic celebration as the chief guests and they witnessed ceremonious marching contingents and country's latest defence weaponry which were on display. Similarly, the historic event was also celebrated across the Northeast region in a grand manner. In the landlocked state of Arunachal Pradesh, people from all walks of life thronged the Indira Gandhi Park in Itanagar and witnessed the 69th Republic Day celebrations. Robust connectivity is inescapable need for the people of a state. This is to have the opportunity to reach out to national and international markets. For decades, there has been no progress on air connectivity. I am confident that this year we shall see the operationalization of the advanced landing ground at Pasighat for commercial flights. Meanwhile, in Assam's Guwahati city, hundreds attended the Republic Day celebration amid high security. State Governor Jagdish Mukhi inspected the Guard of Honour accorded by the marching contingents and unfurled the tricolour flag at Khanapara Veterinary College playground. Moreover, as part of the Republic Day celebrations, Manipur Chief Minister hoisted a monumental national flag measuring 30 feet by 20 feet on a 100 feet mast at Imphal International Airport complex. The mast has operational lights on the top and the flag would be illuminated with floodlights so that it is clearly visible at night. Despite militant boycotts, young and old gathered at the Kangla Fort in Imphal and witnessed the colourful folk dance performances from various cultural dance troops of the state. The gathering renewed the strength in unity and oneness amongst the society. The happy moment uh, for the Manipur state because we got the highest and the biggest tricolor tri today and it has been hosted in the premier, uh, premises of the uh, Imphal Airport and uh, on this occasion I'm giving my best wishes and the happiness to the uh, peoples of Manipur as well as the forces here working in the airport. The landlocked state of Nagaland, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Tripura and Sikkim were similarly seen drenched in patriotism. It is also worth mentioning that a great number of school students from various schools in Agartala, including girls, thronged Know Your Army workshop organized by Assam Rifles as part of the celebrations. The arms display rally aimed at attracting local youth to join the armed forces and serve the nation. If you are uh, interested in defense, 
I suggest you to watch this all and it will uh, make your knowledge developed even about arms and ammunition not only for uh, us even for the civilians so that they'll know what Indian Army is all about it will help them to know in detail what exactly Indian Army is doing for us for public for everyone so it's a kind of source to know briefly about them Various tribes from Nagaland also showcase their exotic cultural heritage during the 69th Republic Day celebration at DDSC Stadium in Dimapur. At the same time, an array of state-produced products ranging from food items to home decor were also exhibited as part of the celebration. Such celebration across the country is indeed a testimony of India's unity and strength. Moving on, weaving and handloom has been part of the social norms of the residents of the Northeast region. With an aim to provide more comfortable and efficient technique in weaving, Nela Handloom Training Come Production Center and the German Development Agency conducted a 25-day training program on handloom weaving for the local weavers and farmers of Meghalaya's Kasi and Jayanta Hills. The use of the handloom and weaving in the Northeastern region dates back from the ancestral time. People from the region have mastered a beautifully craft and pass on the art form from one generation to another. In Mekalia, the state government and other social organizations have initiated various training and workshops in order to revive and promote the indigenous weaving and handloom designs. Recently, Nila Handloom Training Come Production Center and the German Development Agency conducted a 25-day training camp for local weavers and farmers of the Kasi and Chandia Hills at Maukas Yang Umra village in East Kasi Hills district. During the training, the trainees were introduced to a new technique of weaving called Flying Eight Loom, which was developed by Andreas Moiler, a German expert on handloom. Weaving by using the flying eight loom can produce about 12 meters of eric cloth instead of the conventional loom that used to produce only about 5 meters in a day. During the training, weavers hailing from Maukiwat, Nonstwain, Umtang, Ripoi District, Chawai, as well as from Maukas Yang, were taught basic weaving methods of the counter march loom with eight shafts and then paddles and the flying shuttle system. The idea of weaving training was to enable weavers to produce wider fabrics with complex patterns, not only for the local but also for the global market. After the training program on handloom weaving, the 21 trainees were felicitated by the German Development Agency. Such training provides capacity-building services to the people, especially people from the remote areas, and help to expand their interests professionally. India's northeast region is blessed with abundant natural resources and has immense tourism potential. Each state of the region has its own scenic beauty and the region is truly a paradise on earth. In a major thrust towards increasing footfall of tourists and making Mizoram a tourist hotspot, the Mizoram government has rolled out interesting tourist activities like ropeway and skywalk. A report. With a wide array of flora and fauna, natural scenic beauty, the landlocked state of Mizoram has many things to offer to its tourists. Tucked away in the lap of nature, the state is surrounded with picturesque landscapes, lush greenery, hills and mountains that make one of the most attractive tourist destinations in India. Realizing the untapped tourism potential of the state, the Mizoram government has started an initiative to construct a ropeway in the state, the longest in Asia, to attract huge footfall of tourists from across the globe. Also, the construction of Skywalk is on the cards that would serve as a great means to imbibe more and more tourists in the state and provide employment to the people at the same time. 
a Delhi-based leading edge private limited, has been hired by the government to execute the work of construction of ropeway and skywalk. Now, these are necessarily needed to attract uh, the Indian tourist and the inbound tourist from abroad to the state. We, by virtue of uh, the nature in Mizoram, uh, we called it uh, Eco Adventure Tourism Circuit because, by virtue of uh, their lifestyle, the people in the hills are adventurous. So, we are utilizing that part of their lifestyle into the tourism promotion. Even youth in uh, Mizoram are also attracted towards cycling, they are into mountain biking and they're into motorcycling. So, we expect they to be attracted and to exploit this for the visiting tourist. They can guide them. The proposed ropeway will be constructed between Dirtlang and Tourist Lodge in Chutlang in Aizol, which will be Asia's largest. The government also plans to construct a skywalk in the land donated by Sifir and Lungdai village councils at Sakau Murtwa along Sifir to Lungdai Road, which will be the first of its kind in India. The centre has sanctioned 99 crore rupees for the project and the state government has already received the first and the second instalments. Ropeway and Skywalk projects are a milestone project that will enhance the growth of tourism in Mizoram. Well, I think it's great that the government's decision to make a, you know, a ropeway from Dortlang to Tzeltlang, it's a, I think I really welcome this decision because um, the traffic jam is a major problem, uh, you know, problem that we face every day, especially traveling towards that area. We always, um, it's just a few kilometers we need to travel for at least 30 to, uh, you know, one hour. It, it takes so much time, so hopefully this, uh, you know, ropeway will if ease the traffic flow in the city. Moreover, aerosports, paragliding, mountain biking, nature walk, restaurant and several commercial shops and parking lot will be constructed at the site to attract tourists. The implementation of such projects will not only enhance growth of tourism sector in the state of Mizoram, but at the same time, it will give an opportunity to the tourists to come close with nature and have experience of a lifetime. Well, viewers, with that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us to our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at anyindia underscore ani. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host, Chandra Kala. Goodbye and take care.